morning. It's a great day in a great room. Um, again, I'd like to thank uh, the support system, uh, our IT folks for um, doing a very aggressive and productive transformation from the, one of Philadelphia's most noteworthy courtrooms into the council chambers for the day. Uh, thank you all so much for your great work, guys. We really appreciate it. Um, we have a quorum, and that's all guests and visitors, visitors have retired behind the rail, and at this time, uh, we will start our council session. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Pastor Alex Valasquez of Oasis City Church. He is here today as the guest of Councilwoman Bass. I would ask all members and guests to please rise. Good morning. Good morning. I am not sure if we should take this opportunity to, play, uh, to pray for the Flyers while we're here and also for the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. But if you can bow your heads for me. Father, we thank you this morning for giving us just this great day. We pray this morning that you may give us the wisdom that is needed to tackle the difficult and just the challenging situations that we face every day in this city. Give every person, Lord God, the patience that they need, Lord God, the strength that they need, and the wisdom that you gave Solomon so that we can continue bearing the people of this great city. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for those inspiring words. Council, be at ease. Again, thank you very much, Pastor. The next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 19, 2015, and the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 19, 2015, be approved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded at the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 19, 2015. Stand approved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. And next order of business is request for leaves of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. There are no requests for leaves of absence on the part of the majority. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Republicans, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. At this time, I will dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to welcome and thank everyone uh, who has come down today to witness their government in action. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that uh, you are engaged in, in participating in this, this wonderful process uh, that uh, the Constitution and the City Charter gives us. Uh, we hope that you enjoy yourself so much today that you actually come back again. So again, thank you all and continue to be a part of our wonderful government. This time, the Chair recognizes Councilman Jones, who will present a resolution honoring Philadelphia's living legends. Would all those living legends please join the Councilman at the podium? And joining the councilman, we have Councilman Good, <laughs> Councilwoman Keona Sanchez, Councilman Nielsen, Councilwoman Bass, Councilman O, Councilwoman Blackwell, and Councilman Heenan.
Senator, how are you? I know. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Today, uh, we recognize living legends. As a result of the National African American History Month, which has its origins in 1915 by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who said that if a race has no history, it has no worthy traditions, it becomes neglig a negligible factor in the thought of the world and stands in danger of being exterminated. We could have stopped there and just recognized names from the past, but on Germantown Avenue in Councilwoman Bass's district, there is a mural, and it had a face on the wall, and there were some young people that were walking down the street. Uh, and I asked them, tell me who that is on the mural. One was David P. Richardson. The other was Georgie Woods. And none of them, Cody, had an idea who they were. And so we said that we need to recognize people constantly not just the ones who have come before, but the ones who are here right now making a difference. Whether we talk about legends like uh, Lucian B. Blackwell or Vernon Marks in North Philadelphia who made a difference by sitting on his step by and doing his thing and providing poor people with housing. These people weren't on murals. They weren't on, uh, we, I actually brought the picture uh, and every time on my desk, Councilman Greenlee, I, I, I can tell the age of a person I'm talking to because they won't know who these people are. That's actually Milton Street with them when he had hair. <laughs> so we're here today to recognize some people that are doing their thing to make a difference today. Uh, whether you talk about Vi Sekahema with his uh, children's adoption program, making a difference, or you talk about, at the other end of the spectrum, Geneva Black, who has made the fourth quarter of life, senior's life, look sexy. <laughs> so here we are, honoring the Philadelphia living legends, Geneva Black, Senator Shirley M. Kitchen, Cody Anderson, Vernon Odom, Fire Commissioner Lloyd Ayers, Vi Sekahema, Bobby Williams in the areas of government, public safety, social justice, civil rights, labor relations, journalism, community activism, business leadership. And we are also taking the opportunity to recognize a young whippersnapper <laughs> who won't uh, be on a mural for quite some time, uh, but has made a significant di di difference. He picks winners. He started out with Seth Williams for DA, he went with Obama against the tide uh, back then, got it right. Went with Michael Nutter uh, for mayor. Went with a guy by the name of Adorado out in the western end of Pennsylvania. And then the surprise of, of, of the decade, uh, a guy by the name of Tom Wolf. So we're recognizing him as well. Whereas. Thank you. Thank you. Geneva A. Black has dedicated her life and service for more than 45 years to providing quality, compassionate, in-home and center-based care for elderly and vulnerable residents in West Philadelphia and beyond. In 1970, Ms. Black joined the Haddington Leadership Organization as a housing coordinator and two years later became its executive director. Since that time, the organization was renamed Haddington Multi Services for Older Adults, Inc., and has more than quadrupled its staff, services, and positive impact in the community. And 
whereas the Honorable Shirley M. Kitchen has a vast history of political service and community advocacy dating back to 1970 when she was a poll worker, to her days as a constituent service representative at Philadelphia City Hall, to her leadership as a state representative, and her current role as the in the Pennsylvania State Senate since 1997. Senator Kitchen's leadership has been celebrated with numerous awards, including the Philadelphia Tribune's Most Influential African American Leader, the Dawn Staley Foundation Government Service Award, the Warren E. Smith Corporate Woman of the Year Award, and the Distinguished Service Community Impact Award from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, among, among many others. And whereas Cody Anderson launched a distinguished career in radio as Vice President and General Manager of WDS Radio in Philadelphia. He continued on to purchase and operate WHAT Radio and open a family-operated public relations firm while also working with Dr. and Mrs. Walter Lomax to make 900 AM WURD Radio accessible to the Philadelphia African-American community. Mr. Anderson worked tirelessly with area prisons, speaking with inmates and giving them a chance to tell their stories, exemplary of his belief that everybody deserves to be heard. Ms. Anderson is also committed to service beyond the borders of Philadelphia with philanthropic contributions to Hurricane Katrina victims and vulnerable groups in Senegal, Africa, where he was, was recognized as an honorary chief. And Whereas Vernon Odom, anchor with Action News Team, comes from a strong family history of journalists, his maternal grandfather, B.T. Harvey Sr., was the second African American to publish a daily newspaper. Vernon Odom has been with WPVI-TV 6ABC in Philadelphia for more than 35 years. His rep repertorial experience dates back to the Martin Luther King assassination when he was a radio reporter in Atlanta. He has covered various phases of the civil rights movement in the Deep South and early political campaigns for national leaders such as former President Jimmy Carter, Andrew Young, Julian Bond, and Maynard Jackson. In November 2004, Mr. Odom was inducted into the Broadcast Pioneers Hall of Fame. Whereas, Lloyd Ayers began his career with the Philadelphia Fire Department in 1974 and devoted 31 years to public service with the Philadelphia Fire Department, serving in every rank in the department from lieutenant to deputy commissioner. Then, Lloyd Ayers was sworn in as Philadelphia's fire commissioner on Wednesday, December 1, 2004. As fire commissioner, he managed the 2,400 member uniformed force and all operations of the Philadelphia Fire Department, which comprised of the comprised of the, the fifth largest fire department in the United States. Commissioner Ayers retired from the Philadelphia Fire Department on June 13, 2014, ending four decades of remarkable service. Whereas Vi Sakahama celebrated a lengthy professional football career in the NFL from 1986 to 1993 when he retired from professional football and the Philadelphia Eagles. Vi then launched his career as a sports announcer in 1994 and with then CBS owned and operated television station WCAU in Philadelphia, working as a spokesperson for weekend sporting events. After the station was sold to NBC, Vi has moved on to do weekday sports announcing and currently serves as the station's sports director. Whereas Bobby J. Williams is a tireless community advocate who has dedicated the past 62 years of his life to struggling residents in the nice town, Tioga neighborhood. Williams began his community activism as a coordinator in the NAACP, first under Philadelphia chapter president A. Leon Higabottom, then throughout the tenure of Cecil B. Moore. Williams also founded several community organizations and became a member of countless more, all while working his way up the ladder at a men's suits warehouse and running his own dry, clean, dry cleaning service. Today, Williams can be found still giving back to the community in a variety of roles with nonprofit organizations throughout Philadelphia. Whereas, Obra S. Condono IV was born and raised in Philadelphia. A graduate of Roman Catholic High School, he obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Education from Florida Agriculture and Mechanic University in 2002. Before joining the Wolf for Governor campaign, Obra worked in the Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter's administration as deputy, legislation, as deputy of legislative affairs, helping to coordinate the city's actual value initiative, AVI. Hmm. 
<laughs> in 2012, Ober was part of the presidential uh, re-election of uh, Obama, and as a Pennsylvania Southeast political director, Ober pre pre previously served as the director of both Mayor Nutter's 2011 re-election bid and District Attorney Seth Williams' race in 2009. Ober currently holds the position of Deputy, deputy Chief of Staff for Governor Tom Wolf before serving in his current position, Ober played a key role on the Wolf campaign as a senior advisor, it's hard to call him senior anything, but senior advisor for the Wolf transition team, and also as deputy campaign manager and political director. Ober's appointment as deputy chief of staff for governor, of the governor makes him the youngest African American to hold such a position in a governor's cabinet. That, that deserves a clap. Be it resolved by counsel of the city of Philadelphia that we hereby honor and, and celebrate Philadelphia's living legends, Geneva Black, Senator Shirley M. Kitchen, Cody Anderson, Vernon Odom, Fire Commissioner Lloyd Ayers, uh, Vi Sekahema, and Bobby Williams in the areas of government, public safety, social justice, civil rights, labor relations, journal journalism, community activism, and business leadership in Philadelphia, also recognizing Ober Canola IV as up and coming living legend, all, <laughs> all parts <laughs> of the Black History Month. Further be it resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to the Philadelphia Living Legends as evidence of this administration's sincere sincerity of this legislative body. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. No, well, hold on. Uh, the chair recognizes Senator Shirley Kitchen for remarks. That's right, Senator. You, you know what it's like. <laughs> I owe you. I owe you one, my brother. I know. I knew you had something up your sleeve, though. I really did. <laughs> This is just a wonderful um, show of support for us and the encouragement. And I know that um, my fellow recipients feel like I do. The only thing missing today is the people that was on that journey with us that help us to accomplish so many of the things. So it's good to give people their roses while, they, while we can smell them. Thank you very much. All right. Speaker Burke. Oh, Bob. Oh, thank you. No, no. Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate that, uh, President Clark. All of you here, I uh, want to thank my NBC 10 team, my morning team, Chris and Bill and Tracy and my colleagues, uh, our NBC 10 alums who are here. Appreciate that you guys came out, members of my faith. All of you, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Councilman Jones, for uh, submitting my name. This is quite an honor. I don't want to leave out my wife. Uh, she, uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, every, every person here could probably appreciate this. Uh, uh, behind every successful man is a shock mother-in-law. And uh, I, I appreciate that her parents had faith that I could take care of their daughter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Council President and Council. Thank you for uh, this honor. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, man. Council Biddies. Good question. Uh, where you are? Yeah, I think we'll, we're a little space challenged. Uh, so if you'll take out your. Yeah, you're going to go up against the rail? He's directing us over there. Oh. Okay. There you go. I had books, you know. And every night is Friday night. Hey, Lou. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Good, good. Good shot, man. You got me on, man. <laughs> great, great, great.
Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't like the half body shot. I don't Sometimes know. it's a half body shot, but they shot at the other spot because just didn't look good. Thank you all very much. And again, congratulations to our living ledgers and the youngest member of the group, soon to be a living legend. Next order of business is communications. The chair requests that the Sergeant of Arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Mr. Decker, would you please read those messages? To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, pursuant to sections 4604 and 2307 of the Home Rule Charter, I am today transmitting to the Council the recommendation of the City Planning Commission on the following bills. Bill numbers 140906, 140007, 140012, 140050, 150056, and 150091. And I am pleased to advise you that on February 25, 2015, I signed the following bill, which was passed by council at a session on February 12, 2015. Bill number 150010. All under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. You have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you so much. The next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I introduce one bill and one non-privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. An ordinance amending section 2305 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Office of Property Assessment, Chief Assessment Officer, Powers and Duties by modifying the documentation requirements for real estate tax exemptions. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to so city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 51st and 50th wards of the city of Philadelphia. That resolution will be on next week's final passes calendar. The chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer one bill. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 11th Street, Susquehanna Street, 10th Street, and Diamond Street. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee and to recognize this Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes this Councilwoman Tasco. Mr. President, I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes this Councilman Johnson. Mr. President, I have two bills and one non-privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. You're welcome. 
An ordinance amending section 19,2600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Business Income and Receipts Taxes to add a new subsection job training sponsorship credit, providing a credit for certain contributions. That bill will be referred to the committee. And an ordinance establishing a no stopping regulation on the 7400 block of Henslow Place. That bill will also be referred to committee. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to some city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 36th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar, and the Chair recognizes Councilwoman Fiona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one non privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration. Deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the seventh ward of the city of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar, and the chair recognizes Councilman Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution declaring March 2nd to March 8th, 2015 is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week in Philadelphia and acknowledging the Greater Delaware Valley Chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society for their, for their work to improve the lives of Philadelphians living with MS. That resolution will be on this week's final passage calendar. And a non privileged resolution supporting House Bill number 229, which creates a punishable offense for the cyber harassment of a child in Pennsylvania and to raise awareness of the need for accountability to cyberbullying in Philadelphia. That will be on next week's final passes calendar. And the chair recognizes Councilman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. The chair recognizes Councilman Good. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Good morning, Mr. President. I offer one. Resolution on your behalf. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution recognizing and commending Fair Trade Philadelphia for its commitment to economic equality for workers and sustainable production practices for the environment. That will be on this week's final passage calendar. And the chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. One privileged resolution today. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution honoring and recognizing Candace B. Mitchell, co-founder and CEO of Maivana in the 4th Councilmanic District for her entrepreneurial skills, ingenuity, and her contributions to the community and economy of Philadelphia as an innovative woman, business owner, as we further recognize March as Women's History Month. And that resolution will be on this week's final passes calendar. And the chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no, no bills or resolutions. Sir. Thank you, Councilman. The chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer well built, one bill today. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> An ordinance amending section 9204 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Vendors in Center City by eliminating previously designated vendor locations in Center City. <laughs> that bill will be referred to committee, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing today. Thank you, Councilwoman. The chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I offer one bill. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Title II of the Philadelphia Code entitled City County Consolidation, Chapter 2300 entitled Property Assessment, Section 2305 entitled Office of Property Assessment, Chief Assessment Officer, Powers and Duties. By setting the deadline to apply for the exemption authorized by this section to be June 1, 2015 for tax year 2016. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee and that concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions and at this time we will have reports from the committee and the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the Committee of Rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports five bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Rules, which is referred to Bill number 140906, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Zoning and Planning, to add a new section 14516 entitled UED Urban Experiential Display Overlay Control District. And Bill number 140936, entitled An Ordinance to Amend the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by Changing the Zoning Designations of Certain Areas of Land Located Within an Area Bounded by Market Street, 48th Street, Haverford Avenue, and 46th Street. And Bill number 141031, entitled An Ordinance 
ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 6th Street, Wood Street, 2nd Street, Benjamin Franklin Bridge Access Road, and Vine Street Expressway Ramp. And Bill number 150007 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Front Street, Oxford Street, Frankfort Avenue, Norris Street, Aramingo Avenue, Fletcher Street, Moyer Street, Burke Street, Girard Avenue, Columbia Avenue, Beach Street, Delaware Avenue, Frankfort Avenue, and Girard Avenue. And Bill number 150050 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Montrose Street, 17th Street, Carpenter Street, and 18th Street. Respectful reports, it has considered the same, the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended. So as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 140936, 141031, 150007, and 150050. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended. So as to permit first reading this day of bills number 140936, 141031, 150007, and 150050. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Bill number 140906 will be placed on the first reading calendar for the next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a report from the Committee on the Environment. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on the Environment reports one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on the Environment, which is referred by number 150011, entitled an ordinance amending section 93402 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Benchmarking Energy and Water Use, to expand the buildings for which the benchmarking and reporting of energy and water usage data is required. Respectful reports it has considered and amended the same, and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Mr. President, I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 150011. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. That concludes our reports on the committee. In the next order of business is consideration of the calendar. I note that those bills just reported from committee have been deemed to have had a first reading. These bills will be placed on our second reading and final passage calendar at our next session of council. As there are no additional bills on the first reading calendar today, the chair recognizes Councilman Jones for the purpose of calling up bills and resolutions on the final passage calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up from second reading <coughs> and final passage calendars today. Numbers 150025, 150126, 150127, 150128, 150130, 150133, 150134, 140244, 140764, 150017, 140230, 140747, 150005, 140944, and 150008. All other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you very much. Before considering these bills and resolutions on our final passage calendar, we will have our public comment session. Uh, it will go as follows. Uh, if you have not already signed up to testify on a bill and resolution that is on the final passage calendar today, uh, I would ask that you sign up at the table in the rear. There you go. All right. Um, your name will be called. Um, once your name is called, you will go to the podium in the middle of the chambers. Uh, there's a device on that uh, podium. Uh, when the light turns green, it is your time to speak. And when the light turns yellow, uh, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. And when the light turns red, we'd ask that you please adhere to the guidelines and conclude your remarks. Uh, you will be given three minutes uh, to testify on the bill of resolution. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Mr. Decker, please call the first name on the list. Michael Rolls. Michael Rolls. Justin Haley. Commenting on 150133. Good morning. Good morning. Well, my name is Justin Haley. I'm a member of Unite Here 634. 
Um, I've been a student safety staff for motivation over for five years now. Um, located at 59th and on Baltimore Avenue. I and my fellow student safety staff are, just, are, char are charged with keeping order, looking after, and ensuring the safety of the students we serve. We do this and much more. We look out for bullying and emotionally stressed students. We lend a ear and a trusting home adult to talk to. We, often call, we are often called the second moms and um, dads of the schools. Um, we do all this while watching over hundreds of kids at one time. Um, we thank you for passing this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony, sir. Nicole Hunt. Commenting on 150133. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Nicole Hunt. I'm a food service worker for the School District of Philadelphia, and I'm a representative of Unite Here Local 634. My coworkers and I feed thousands of children across the city every day. For many of them, we provide their only reliable meal. We offer love and take enormous pride in what we do. We hope to get this matter resolved as soon as possible. In spite of the current, in spite of the current situation, the members remain committed to the students, their safety, and the care. And care is our number one priority. The students are like our children, so ought to be ours is a labor of love. Please pass this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Donna Cooper. Commenting on 150005. Good morning. Good morning. Council President Sharon and I are both testified. Could she go first and then I go second? We're both on the list. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Reverend Sharon Easterling. I'm the Executive Director of the Delaware Valley Association for the Education of Young Children. We're the professional association of early childhood practitioners and we're on a mission to make every early childhood program in the city high quality so that all children have the opportunity to achieve their God-given potential. As I speak to you this morning, I'm fully aware of the myriad of pressing issues face facing the city of Philadelphia. They're all clamoring for your attention, and each is asserting priority status. So when I tell you that ensuring a high-quality preschool experience for every young child in Philadelphia is the single most important thing we can do to address the vexing problems of multi-generational poverty, education funding, student outcomes, crime, and the escalating cost of incarceration, a skilled workforce, an insufficient tax base, and the runaway cost of chronic health problems, I'm pretty sure you'll be skeptical. But more than 40 years of research bears out these benefits. Consider this one fact. If I told you that we have the ability to reduce the number of children in each grade in the school district of Philadelphia who need special education, from 1,500 students down to below 500, saving $5 million per class for a total of $60 million in savings in that one area, I think you would be impressed. Well, that's exactly what the evaluation of pre-K counts in Philadelphia demonstrates. Reduction of special ed from 14% down to 4%. Unfortunately, despite the proven benefits, of high quality early childhood education, the state only funds a fraction of eligible children and the city has even less skin in the game. But the benefits of universal pre-K is only part of the story. There's another fact that we ignore at our own peril. Because the majority of our young children in the city are in childcare programs that are substandard because of chronic underfunding. We can ignore this silent crisis today but ultimately we'll pay the price when these children grow up and their challenges become more costly to remediate. So if we know that universal high quality pre-K has such a great return on investment and less than a third of our children are getting these services and the remainder of children are in poor to mediocre quality, what do we need to do to move forward? What we need is a plan to fund universal pre-K in Philadelphia. We need a plan that is embraced and owned by the leaders of the city, and we need to build public will to support that plan. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. I'm Donna Cooper. I'm the Executive Director of Public Citizens for Children and Youth. 
and I'm here today to thank Councilwoman Blackwell, the chair of the Education Committee, for managing a process to bring together this terrific resolution to put a pre-K measure on the ballot, and to also thank her colleague, Wondell Reynolds-Brown, for making sure this happened, and ultimately, Council President Clark, to thank you for putting this on the docket today. Um, I know that, and we all know, it's a very crowded ballot. We know that we should take our charter very seriously. It is a sacred document. But I also know that the vote today to put this measure on the ballot is about the future of our city. I cannot emphasize more strongly that a vote to put this on the ballot will change the trajectory of our city. I want to thank you for a yes vote on this measure because you will be voting to reduce child poverty. I want to thank you for a yes vote on this measure because you will be voting for our children to start school ready for school success. I want to thank you for a yes vote on this measure because you will be making sure more of our children graduate high school, go to college, and graduate college. I want to thank you for a yes vote on this measure because you will be decreasing the number of children who are arrested and incarcerated. And finally, I want to thank you for voting yes on this measure because you will be voting for the prosperity, the vibrancy, and the competitiveness of our city. And I want to invite my friends who helped us collect these 4,000 petitions that we're bringing into council right now that recognize your courage to put this on the ballot and your belief that the voters will say yes and your willingness to vote today to help the dreams of our children come true. And if you'll just stand, the few of us are in the room today, Kadish, stand up, and Sean and Sharon for helping get these petitions. Thank you very much, City Council of Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. There are no other speakers on the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. The, there being no additional speeches, we will move on to our calendar. Uh, Mr. Decker, could you please read the title of 150025? A resolution authorizing the creation of a special committee on income inequality in the city of Philadelphia to identify trends, impacts, and opportunities associated with income inequality in the city of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the motion to approve the resolution, please. Second. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it, and 150025 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 150126. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of Belmont number two urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 4050 through 66 Haverford Avenue. And chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. 150126 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 150127. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying additional fees simple title to sitting on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 43rd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And resolution 150127 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 150128. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and or renewal of a portion of the Model City's urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1925 West Wilt Street. The chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Those opposed? Ayes have it. And 150128 is adopted. Mr. Decker. 150130. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying additional fee simple title to a certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 18th, 19th, and 37th wards of the city of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. 150130 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 150133. A resolution urging the School District of Philadelphia and the School Reform Commission to return to the bargaining table with Unite Here, Local 634. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Second. Been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution 150133 is adopted. 
Mr. Decker, 150-134. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees and title to service any on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 31st Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <laughs> Ayes have it. And 150-134 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 140244. Uh, I will note that this requires a two-thirds vote. It is a charter change. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Road Charter to provide for the creation, appointment, powers, and duties of a commission for women. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Can you please call the roll? Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? <coughs> Councilman Jones? Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Gordon Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. Wait for the uh, uh, Councilman Jones and Councilman <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> Ayes are 16 and nays are zero. The resolution is 140244 is approved. Mr. Decker, 140764. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Road Charter to provide for the adoption of language access plans by all city agencies. Uh, again, I note that this is a resolution proposing an amendment to the Home Rule Charter. It requires a two-thirds vote. Mr. Decker, will you please call the roll? Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Karen Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Um, resolution 140764 is approved. Mr. Decker, 150017. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to provide for the creation, appointment, powers, and duties of a commission on universal pre kindergarten. Again, this is a resolution proposing an amendment to the Home Rule Charter. Requires a two thirds vote. Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Ronald Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. The ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Resolution of 150017 is passed. Mr. Decker called the piece 140230. An ordinance providing for the submission to the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia of the proposal set forth in a resolution approved by Council proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Charter relating to the creation, appointment, powers, and duties of a commission for women. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. The ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 140747. An ordinance providing for the submission to the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia the proposal set forth in a resolution approved by Council proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to provide for the preparation of language access plans by all city agencies. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Conan Sanchez, Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Aye. Councilman Squilla, Aye. Councilwoman Tasco, Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16, the nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 150005. An ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia of an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rural Charter, establishing and defining the responsibilities of an independent commission on universal pre kindergarten. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Council 
Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Conrad Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. The ayes are 16, the nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Mr. Decker, please read the title of 140944. An ordinance amending subcode A of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code, entitled the Philadelphia Administrative Code, by amending Section A907 entitled Zoning Fees, by revising certain zoning fees for family and group daycares. Now, this bill has been read on two separate days. Um, Councilwoman, you want to speak on the prior bill? No. Let me, or this one? Okay. Um, We'll, we'll suspend the vote, and if Mr. Decker, is that okay? All right, okay. Mr. Decker says it's okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Councilwoman. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I would be very, very remiss, because I, I think it's important that the record reflects when members of council from different persuasions and other ways come together in a magnificent way around an issue that um, binds us and when it comes to quality child care and trying to find ways to minimize and or eliminate barriers, we should do that. So I want to salute Councilman Brian O'Neill uh, on this measure. My, the first bill I passed in City Council now 14 years ago was about child care and here we are 14 years later uh, singing basically from the same sheet of music. So I wanted to salute him and thank him for working with me and actually urging me to act and move on this measure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Decker, can you read the title again, please? Bill number 140944, entitled an ordinance amending subcode A of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code, entitled the Philadelphia Administrative Code, by amending Section A907, entitled Zoning Fees, by revising certain zoning fees for family and group daycares. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the rule. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman Nielsen. Aye. Councilman O'Brien. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Conan Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Ronald Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilwoman Tasco. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 150-008. An ordinance amending subcode A of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code entitled the Philadelphia Administrative Code as it has been amended by Bill Number 140856 by amending Chapter 9 entitled Fees by revising the fees for licenses issued under Chapter 93900 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Property Licenses and Owner Accountability. This bill has been read on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell? Aye. Councilman Good? Aye. Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Councilman O'Brien? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilwoman Conan Sanchez? Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Councilwoman Tasco? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. The ayes are 16, the nays are zero. The majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passed. Is. Mr. Decker, do you have any additional resolution? A resolution declaring March 2nd to March 8th, 2015 as Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week in Philadelphia and acknowledging the Greater Delaware Valley Chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society for their work to improve the lives of Philadelphians living with MS. Introduced by Councilman Nielsen. Chair recognizes Councilman Nielsen for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we approve. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Ayes have it, and that resolution is approved. And a resolution recognizing and commending Fair Trade Philadelphia for its commitment to economic equality for workers and sustainable production practices for the environment. Introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown on behalf and Council, uh, Council President Clark. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I move for the adoption. Second. <coughs> it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring and recognizing Candace V. Mitchell, co-founder and CEO of Mayavana in the 4th Councilmanic District, Councilmanic District for her entrepreneurial skills, ingenuity, and her contributions to the community and economy of Philadelphia as an innovative woman business owner as we further recognize March as Women's History Month, introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Second. Second. It's been moved on property. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Are there any speeches on the part of the minority? And again, I ask you all to raise your hands because we do not have the screen. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I just wanted to alert the public, as I know uh, Councilwoman uh, Blackwell has as well, that uh, since there has been a law change regarding uh, tax-exempt uh, properties, uh, that um, there is now a requirement that uh, documentation be filed to ensure that nonprofit uh, organizations are using the, the property fully in a nonprofit manner. Um, Unfortunately, what has happened is uh, uh, the Office of Property Assessment, uh, which had dated uh, letters uh, January the 21st, did not send out the letters till February the 13th, and many organizations are receiving, receiving those, uh, those packages or those letters now, and they are uh, alarmed to find a deadline of March 31st for tax year 2016. Uh, the requirements are burdensome. A copy of the organization's Articles of Incorporation, a copy of the organization's Internal Revenue Service Letter of Determination for 501c3 recognition, a copy of the organization's charter and bylaws, <coughs> including all amendments, a copy of the most recent income and expense statement, a copy of the organization's current statement of assets and liabilities, a copy of the organization's most recently filed IRS Form 990, a statement of all fundraising activities conducted by the organization, a copy of the leases entered into the organization for space at the subject property and a copy of the recorded deed for the subject property. Failure to comply with documentation requirements will slow the processing, but failure to meet the March 31st deadline will have serious consequences for tax exempt entities because they will lose their tax exemption and become fully taxable for the year 2016 and future years going forward. Small churches, volunteer organization, ethnic uh, groups, um, which have nonprofits and uh, they may not speak English, uh, are at this time, many of them, unaware that there is a new requirement, that there are forms to be filled out, uh, documentation to substantiate, and a deadline of March 31st. Uh, I was at a meeting last night of a veterans organization, and as I walked in, they were talking about this very issue, uh, that you know they don't have regular meetings, they don't have uh, full-time uh, uh, officers, they just got the letter and they are now just aware that they are uh, looking at this big tax issue. And so it is important that uh, the Office of OPA, uh, OPA provide a new deadline. Um, and what I have done uh, and, uh, is to introduce a bill to set the, the uh, uh, to extend the deadline to June the 1st, uh, adding uh, another 62 days. Um, the uh, important issue here is that we fast track this and we let organizations know, one, is they have this law, second is that they have to comply with it, and I know that there are other issues that are going on, but at least in terms of the many organizations that are reaching out, I think, to all of us, um, that uh, we are extending the deadline, uh, at least uh, if the bill passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Tasco. Um, Mr. President, I will be sending around today to my colleagues a press release from the Business Wire um, to show that um, UIL was bought by Abiradrola, USA company, a foreign company operating in the, U in the United States. My only question today is uh, what did UIL know and when did they know it? Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman, that same sounds familiar. What UIL is, what is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds familiar. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, she recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to concur with the statement by my colleague, Councilman um, David O, regarding the uh, of, Office of Property Assessment and a requirement for nonprofit organizations to file their tax exempt status by March the 31st. Um, I have been in contact with uh, members of several churches, including the um, president of the Black Clergy of Philadelphia, who also reached out to Councilman Janie Blackwell regarding this issue. Uh, we know that churches are traditionally tax exempt, and um, if this measure moves forward as is without um, the churches being notified, 
um, about the actual deadline, it can have a significant and dire impact on um, their overall operations. And so I um, wholeheartedly support on Councilman O's legislation, we will be vocal as we move forward to make sure mm -hmm. those who are doing the good work in the nonprofit area aren't penalized based upon legislation, based upon a policy um, that came out of the Office of Property Assessment. Um, also, Mr. President, today I introduced legislation that provides a dollar for dollar tax credit to businesses which contribute to job training programs here in the city of Philadelphia. This bill will make skilled labor positions more available by encouraging businesses to invest in low-cost skill certifications programs. It will employ folks with higher paying jobs, increase our tax base, and is the exact type of investment government should be making in our workforce. Generosity.com, a columnist and urban affairs coalition manager of partnerships and outreach, and a constituent of mine, Tavani DeVore, made a compelling argument to connect tax credits for, to job training which was found in the Philadelphia Business Journal article, Generosity, Why Philadelphia Should Invest in Skilled Labor Development. This article was the impetus for the program. And so as we move forward, um, I know we have the Democratic National Convention coming here to the city of Philadelphia. We also have the Pope coming here to the city of Philadelphia. But also as we focus on closing the gap between the rich and the poor, uh, we continue to have an, an agenda of helping people get jobs, most, most importantly, a skilled workforce. And so I just want to make that known um, to the public. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. To recognize Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. And I certainly thank my colleagues for all they've said about this issue of the Office of Property Assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, the bill I introduced, the difference between mine and Councilman O's is that he postpones it till June and mine takes that section of the bill out so that the, it will be as it has been before this bill was introduced. As was said, I did talk to uh, uh, the head of the black clergy, uh, Pastor Terrence Griffith. I've talked to many ministers in my area. I've talked to my own church, Sharon Baptist Church, and in fact, on my way here, I, uh, upstairs, I ran into a couple of women who were here uh, just for this issue from the church. So certainly for all those who are representing churches around the city, we thank them for coming and we ask that they will uh, come back when we have a public hearing to express their concerns. Um, it is, uh, I've talked to so many churches from Metropolitan and many other churches who are very, very upset. Some churches receive notification that mm. they're supposed to file all these forms already referenced by Councilman <laughs> Owen. Some did not. Some churches receive them themselves personally. Some have other people who receive them. Councilman Greenlee was just telling me about the Veterans of Foreign Wars, a vet post, where some have some uh, issues and parts of the post and various members' names. So. Uh, it appears that for the OPA to send out some notices that some got, some churches did not get, and other nonprofits, we really weren't ready for this aspect of this issue. Uh, Councilman Bill Green initially introduced it, and uh, obviously he's not here. We have our own issues on the School Reform Commission we deal with that brother. So, uh, you feel Green's okay though, right, Councilman? Oh my goodness. So um, uh, again, we thank everyone for coming, and we ask all those members from the various churches, as soon as we have a public hearing date, we had to introduce the bill here today. We will let them know, and, we, and it has to be public knowledge at any rate, in three papers, and we hope that they will come back yeah. so that we may have a full discussion and really pass the legislation we introduced today to do away with this reporting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, thank you, Councilwoman. This being the People's Council, I'm sure we'll collaborate and come with a, with a reasonable solution to this very troubling issue. Thank, and thank you all. Um, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Tasco. Yes, Mr. President, I'd just like to introduce um, two new staff members in the, for the 9th Councilmatic District, uh, Mrs. Gwen Redmond, who is here with us. Please stand today. up. She's a strong community worker and leader in uh, the 50th Ward, and we welcome her. And we welcome. <laughs> let's give her a round of applause. Welcome. And she's a great cook. All right. <laughs> 
and um, Mr. Frank Iannuzzi, who's a young man who just finished law school yeah. uh, with honors, and uh, he's here uh, sharing the spot which uh, Derek Green uh, held for many years before leaving to run for council at large. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Frank was actually a member of our fellows program yes, at the yes. City Council. <laughs> yeah, awesome. During a discussion about one issue, I stopped and thought, wait a minute, don't you want to come work for me? Yeah, right. <laughs> so he's a great, yeah. great person. And I happened to know his parents, and awesome. I didn't know I knew his parents. Great training ground. <laughs> and I suspect the councilman is going to talk about a, a new hire, Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to also acknowledge in the spirit of my colleague, Councilman Marion Tasco, a new addition to my staff, Mr. Jasmine Sadat. She's a graduate of University of Spelman College as well as <laughs> University of Berkeley, California. Jasmine, can you stand? She's yeah. the liaison for planning and community engagement. I want to welcome her aboard. Thank All you. right. Welcome, Jasmine. Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you. Mr. President, I neglected. Uh, would uh, ask that you recognize and ask to stand members of the black clergy and other churches and other representatives who are here. Thank you, Councilman. I'd like to ask for members of the black clergy and other churches, please stand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, given the challenges that we face every council session, it is always good to have the clergy in the house. And please say a prayer for us. Thank you so much. Um, there being no additional speeches, Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Councilman Johnson keeps stealing the microphone from me. <laughs> Thank you, Council uh, President. I just wanted um, to add to today's discussion some important points. I, I definitely want to thank Councilman Greenlee, who's worked with all of us on some of these charter changes. Um, as was stated, the charter is an important document um, and really should reflect um, the spirit in which we operate this government between the executive, the judicial, and the legislative branch of government. Um, I I want to congratulate Councilwoman Blackwell on her commission for universal pre-K. Um, it goes without saying the, the value and the importance uh, of that issue, and all of us will continue to support her on that. Uh, I also want to congratulate Councilwoman uh, Brown and Tasco on the Women's Commission. I think one of the most important things we can do as a legislative branch and as government is to ensure, as Councilwoman Blackwell uh, Brown often says, if, if women are not on the table, they're, they're on the menu. And I think that reestablishing the Women's Commission is an important value to not only us in the legislative branch, but also to the executive branch. So I look forward to working with them on that establishment. And I want to thank my council colleagues. You know, every single Thursday we're here, um, and we vote on very, very important things. And a, a couple months ago, I, I um, called out to those people interested in the second floor to look at what's going on in the fourth floor, and I think today is a reflection of um, the thoughtfulness of the legislative process and what we've done, and I want to thank all of my council colleagues, Councilman Good, for working with me on the language access issue. I think that um, with all of the work that uh, Mayor Nutter has done through the executive order, through MoIMA, some of the immigration work that, that I worked with, uh, with Councilman Kenny, ensuring that we give the voters an opportunity to express their support for the important issues of this legislative uh, body is hugely important. Language access, as, as we've seen, um, has become an issue uh, as we deal with public safety issues, as, as we've dealt um, with a lot of the immigration issues. But more importantly, this allows us to uh, ingrain in our, in our charter the, the value of Philadelphia becoming this global city that we talk about. We've talked about the growth of immigrants, new immigrants in the city, the economic clout that they bring, the vitality to, to the neighborhoods um, throughout the city of Philadelphia. Uh, Having an, an articulated plan and, and more importantly, goal setting for the departments is hugely important because it sends a signal that, yes,
yes, English is the primary language, um, but uh, we are very interested in ensuring that people feel like they have access to their government. As someone who's represented parts of the Northeast with a growing Russian community, Brazilian community, um, we all know the importance of the Asian and la the Latino community and the growth of the city. They now represent 20% of, of the citizens of the city of Philadelphia. This is an important right step, and I'm very proud today, as I am every day, of this council and the work we do and the support that, that we receive and I receive as we move forward these very important issues. So thank you to my colleagues, um, and, and thank you to all of our stakeholders who work with us on all of these issues every single day. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, there being no additional speeches, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion. Yes, Mr. President, before I get to my, uh, my duty, I would be, it's important that I say thank you to all members, both the women and all the enlightened men of Philadelphia City Council for supporting Councilwoman Tasco's and our measure to make the Commission of Women uh, a permanent fixture in government, presuming we get a yes vote from the voters. And uh, the compelling argument for me is Right now, women make 77 cents on the dollar. Women of color make 64 cents on the dollar. And Latino <coughs> women make less than that. And that number has only changed two cents in the last 10 years. And at the rate we're going, my daughter will be 75 years old before women are making a dollar to a dollar for men. So I thank members for understanding that this was an important measure. Secondly, as we celebrate or look towards celebrating uh, these last few days of African American History Month, I want to re uh, encourage and remind my uh, colleagues to please join us in City Council for the third annual celebration of African American History Month, coming to our members uh, with uh, leadership and your consent, uh, Mr. President. And this year we have music, art, dance, poetry, and a special reading by all members of council wherein we will read Congressman John Lewis' speech as was given to the March on Washington. So all are invited, along with our special clergy who are joining us today. Uh, please join us in Council Caucus, and please remember our friendly rule. If you don't stay for the program, then you simply cannot enjoy lunch with us. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman, motion. Yes. So I move that Council stand adjourned until Thursday. March 5th, 2015, at 10 a.m. Thank you. We'll move probably second. The council stand adjourned until Thursday, March 5th, 2015, 10 a.m. All those in favor? Those opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you all very much.